Today against the Miami Dolphins, quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo, went off the field with a very bad lower leg injury, and this was so severe that it actually required him to be carted off. As of right now, sources seem to be a little bit mixed as to whether or not Garoppolo is dealing with a foot or an ankle injury. But one thing is for certain is that he is dealing with an injury to the lower leg and it looks like he will miss some time. A few things happened on the play that Garoppolo was injured on, one being that the foot went into more of an eversion position. And since some people may not be too familiar as to why this could be detrimental to the lower leg, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on that with this video. Welcome back everybody. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with my channel, I take a look at injuries and I try to explain them so that they are a little bit easier to understand. I also go over the appropriate rehab timetable so that we know when that person could potentially return back to the field. If you like today's video and you find it informative, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Now we can see here that as Garoppolo is being brought down into the ground, we see that left foot sort of get planted into the turf there, and that foot seems to get rolled up underneath of him. Now here I have a model of the foot and ankle, and so the two long bones that come down and make the top portion of the ankle joint are the tibia, or the bone often we associate with as being the shin bone. That comes down and makes this inside portion known as the medial malleolus. Then as we go towards the outside of the ankle here, this long bone known as the fibula comes down and makes the outside portion of the ankle known as the lateral malleolus. And as we look further into the joint here, there is a bone known as the talus bone, and this is going to make up the bottom portion of the ankle. Now there are a few common motions at the ankle and they are First off being dorsiflexion where the foot is going to be bending backwards in this direction. Then we have the opposite of that being plantar flexion where a person is going to point the toes this way. As we flip the model this direction, we have another motion known as inversion where the foot is going to roll up this way, sort of in that classic ankle sprain position. And finally we have eversion where the ankle is going to roll out that opposite way. As we look on that injury video once again, as that foot is planted into the turf, he's doing more of an eversion position. And this is important because as this is occurring, we actually have some ligaments in through here and they make up a group known as the deltoid ligament. And this ligament actually works to contribute to overall ankle stability by preventing this eversion motion. So if a person goes through excessive motion in this eversion position, then they run the risk of having damage to this deltoid ligament. We actually have two other ligaments that are above the formal ankle joint, and these are known as the high ankle ligaments. Now, whenever we hear high ankle sprain, that's when these ligaments are going to be implicated. The first one is known as the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. So it's the one that is located anterior, which is the front, inferior, which is low, tibiofibular because it's going to attach the tibia and the fibula. Then as we go to the back here, we have the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. So posterior meaning back, inferior once again meaning low, and tibiofibular because it's going to attach the tibia and the fibula together as well. Now, anytime a person is going to go into this eversion position with the foot being planted, they are also going to be getting a rotational component in through that foot. And so anytime they do this, you can see here that as a person goes through that eversion rotation component, these two bones, the tibia and fibula, are going to want to separate. Now, as this happens to a person, this is absolutely going to stress those two ligaments that are known as the high ankle ligaments. So it's also very possible that he is a high risk for a high ankle sprain in this position as well. Now let's look at the possibility of Garoppolo having a foot injury. It's absolutely possible that he could be dealing with this as well because as he's being pulled down into the ground, we see the defender's knee actually go and make direct contact with the foot. So as we look along the medial or inside portion of the foot here, we have the, this is known as the first metatarsal, second metatarsal, and there are actually five of these, five, one for each toe. So here you have the metatarsals going through here, and then we have the intrinsic foot bones. 
As we look a little closer here, this bone is known as the navicular bone, and that's actually going to go from the way inside portion of the foot all the way towards about the midfoot. Then as we come down here, there is a group of three bones, and these are known as the lateral cuneiform, the intermediate cuneiform, and finally the medial cuneiform. It is possible that these bones are implicated. A lot of times when these bones get injured, it is from a direct axial blow coming right down on the foot. So despite some sources saying an ankle or a foot, it's very possible that there is a structure located in the foot that's being implicated as well in this position. If a bone is being affected in this position, the easiest way to rule this out would be either an x-ray or an MRI. So I expect him to have some advanced imaging just to basically rule out any sort of fracture located to the foot. We do have some ligaments that are located in the actual foot itself as well. So it's possible those are implicated, but in order to rule an injury out to those, he would need something more advanced like an MRI. There are a couple of on-field tests to rule out whether a person is dealing with a high ankle sprain or a deltoid ligament sprain. Essentially what you're going to do for the deltoid ligament is you're gonna put that person into that eversion position. And if you feel any laxity in the affected foot compared to the other side or the person reports pain, then this is going to be indicative and make us think that the deltoid ligament is implicated. And then there is another test that we can do essentially to rule out or rule in whether or not a high ankle sprain has occurred. And that's where we provide a rotational component to the foot. So we'll hold the person's foot and provide some rotation, basically trying to separate the tibia and fibula. And once again, if a person reports pain or there's laxity compared to the other side, then this makes us think that it is a potential high ankle sprain. So there are several different structures that could be implicated in this injury. Unfortunately, right now, we do not have a lot of information, but based on the mechanism, it's absolutely possible that there is some sort of intrinsic foot injury and or something along the lines of a deltoid ligament injury or a high ankle sprain. We're just going to need to see the result of some advanced imaging to essentially know what we're dealing with. If I happen to hear anything regarding this case, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. And also, if you happen to hear anything, please feel free to update us as well. And that's it as of right now regarding Jimmy Garoppolo's most recent lower leg injury. I wish him the best of luck moving forward. I hope it's not very severe and that we can see him return to the field before the end of the season. Once again, if you like today's content and you want to see more of it, please feel free to subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.